What pressing bells for these who die as cattle? Only the monstrous anger of the guns. Only the stuttering rifle's rapid rattle can patter out their hasty horizons. No mockeries now for them, no prayers, no bells, nor any voice of mourning save the choirs, the shrill, demented choirs of wailing shells and bugles calling for them from such shires. What candles may be held to speed them all? Not in the hands of boys, but in their eyes shall shine the holy glimmer of goodbyes. The pallor of girls' brows shall be their pall. Their flowers, the tenderness of patient minds. And each slow dusk, a drawing down of blinds. This is the one we know, Anthem for Doomed Youth. A Spenserian sonnet, traditionally, as we know, associated with romance and love. Uh, this time used as um, a signifier of a funeral and a false funeral at that. Uh, firstly, we look at the word anthem. Now, anthem, of course, as we know, is usually a song of glory, a song of patriotism. And once we see anthem for doomed youth, again, we get that oxymoronic phrasing, which is Owen's main way of sort of getting his message across, that he always uses irony and oxymorons. He takes a known form and he remoulds it uh, to create this mockery of everything that's gone before him, including the institution of poetry. So we get doomed youth. Uh, and in that sense, he's reminding us about what World War One is doing to uh, an entire generation. The generation not only are doomed at the battlefront, but they're doomed uh, even when they return uh, because they will return broken our return uh, weakened and basically he is suggesting that the loss uh, in this poem is not just that one soldier who might be attacked with gas but an entire generation so a good poem to use for your essay what passing bells for those who die as cattle we start with a rhetorical question there die as cattle another simile as you can see here, the word as means we have a simile. And the question mark at the end, he is suggesting again what funeral rites will be given to these men who are dying the same way that we would kill uh, animals for meat. So there's no emotion, there's no response, there's no reaction. The human has been removed from the situation and the animal takes over. And that is the great tragedy that he's trying to remind us of. Only the monstrous anger of the guns. We get a personification there, anger of the guns. Again, guns, death, all sorts of uh, non-human creatures appear in Owen's poetry regularly to remind us that um, the war machine is uh, basically the enemy. Not the German, not the Turk, uh, but the machinery of war is the one thing that all of them stand against. And so therefore, all men in this war are united against that common enemy. And the stuttering rifles, rapid rattle, a bit of alliteration. The alliteration, of course, can suggest the regular sound of the machine gun. One must realise that people at home uh, have no idea what the sound of the battlefront would be. Uh, to them, they'd be thinking of a war still on horses and glory and a bit of cannon. But machine guns have a very particular and regular sound. And the rapid rap rattle, pattering out the hasty orisons, which of course orisons mean prayers, the prayers of the men. Anything they're doing that is ritualistic, that is something they knew before, is being blocked out by this uh, modern war machine. No mockeries now for them, no prayers, nor bells, nor any voice of mourning save the choirs, the shrill, demented choirs of wailing shells. The funeral is... An alien-esque one again, uh, a funeral on the battlefront, a funeral for these men that is uh, disingenuous, ugly, alienating, and removed from a, a proper and decent experience that one would expect uh, a funeral for any man, least of all a young man, to be about. The second sestet starts again with a, a rhetorical question. What candles may hell to speed them all? He reminds us that he's asking this question of everyone. What funeral are you going to give to these men? 
what's what's left for them? Uh, what candles are you going to lead for them to speed them to heaven? That's what the idea of lighting the candle is when you see that image in church and so forth, quite famous. Uh, not in the hands of boys, but in their eyes shall shine the holy glimmers of goodbyes. The pallor of girls' brows shall be their pall, the pall bearer, the person marching you toward death, the loss in the word pallor. Their flowers, the tenderness of patient minds, and each slow dusk a drawing down of the blinds. The traditional uh, funeral march through a town uh, would have the respectful showing of anyone in the street pulling their blinds down. Death was much more prominent in um, Owen's day, not just because of the war, but prior to that, the funerals were, were marched through streets and people were respectful. Here, of course, we have such a, a, a massive death rate that you cannot fathom uh, what would happen if every single soldier had a funeral. So they must miss out on this uh, last little image here that we see the drawing down of the blinds which also is reminiscent of the going down of the sun, uh, which is a very famous uh, image we have from World War One, of course, as we know. So um, this is a very short, simple poem, but quite a beautiful and elegant one to use for your uh, essay, because we have loss of ritual. We have loss of identified uh, ways of being. There's a new existence for these people. And the doomed youth, we have a loss in the time generation. So you could talk to that in your essay. Also, form, um, the idea of the sonnet being mocked, uh, ironically. Uh, sonnets of, of love and romance are, of course, about joy, about um, marriage, which, of course, leads to new birth and new life. And this is the very opposite of that. Uh, again, it's a poet in, in, in incredible control of his craft uh, because he's using... It's some fantastic uh, rhymes, as well as some para rhymes and slant rhymes, which I, of course, we know is famous for. The slant rhymes are there to um, to pull you out of the self and to realise that there is a, a disharmony in everything that's happening here. An example would be orisons and choirs, um, orisons and bells and so forth. These are what we call slant rhymes.